by Gary Paulson, his cover of the book, just to cover a few of the uh, logistics first. It's published by Scholastic, copyright date is 1987, Green Levels 5.7, kind of recommended for sort of middle grades to high school. But enough with the logistics, let's get down to the real, the real grit of this, of this book. Now, imagine, let's just take a little stroll through imagination. Again. Now imagine, if you will, your parents have just gone through a terrible divorce. A divorce so devastating that it forced your father to move to the Canadian Northwest oil fields just to escape the pain. As for you... You're young, reckless, and foolhardy. You do nothing to appease your parents' restless spirits, even though you know the secret to the divorce, the truth behind the separation, unbeknownst to your father's knowledge. Days go on without a whisper. Winter turns to spring, spring turns to summer. Before long, you realize it is time to leave the embrace of your city mother and travel north to a wild land which your father now calls his home. Will you tell them the secret? Or will your bush plane fall from the sky, leaving you stranded miles and miles and miles and miles away from any place of safety or refuge? You're alone. Your body is battered and broken, and your only source of survival is a small, slightly rusted hatchet given to you by your mother de before the departure. But can a hatchet save you from extreme bouts of starvation? Stave off wild moose attacks or Canadian tornadoes, which apparently do exist. <laughs> Read Hatchet by Gary Paul to find out. <laughs> and, if I didn't already tell you before, the boy in this book is only 13 years old. I don't know what it is with putting 13 year olds through all of this. <coughs> we learned from Christy's present PowerPoint. But, it's not really about, yes, this book has just an amazing story, but it's what you take from it that makes it a must read. I'm talking about moral fiber people. Moral fiber lesson number one, overcome any obstacle. Now, as teachers, we're going to have people, kids come into our rooms acting like little grumble puffs every day. I take, for example, let's say Tammy comes into my room. <laughs> Mr. William, the kids at school have been picking, the boys at school have been picking on me again. Well, Tammy, the boy in this book, Brian, gets picked on by a bull moose and a tornado in the same day. <laughs> <laughs> what do we call that? Motivation. Motivated, motivated, motivated. This book will teach you, will give you the motivation to overcome any obstacle. Moral fiber point number two, develop an appreciation for life. You know, out there, we don't have the modern conveniences that we have here in our little civilization. And out there, anything can happen. A little single berry could represent, uh, could separate you from an untimely death. <laughs> so anytime you have any blessings that come to you, whether they're large or small, you better appreciate them. So by reading this book, you come to appreciate the little things in life. And you know what? Maybe even life itself. Point number three, learn to respect nature. Brian goes through a lot of trials and tribulations out there, and he kind of learns his place in the world. <coughs> because like I said, any time he could be taken out like that. You know, we've kind of seen how, you know, if you disrespect nature, well, nature's going to bite back. Now, folks, I want to be real with you. Because this book is chock full of realism. It accurately describes sort of the necessities of survival. When I was reading this book, I thought like it was a real account. Because it takes place, one, in a real world context, gives you real world solutions and real world problems. And these days, kids need that. They want something authentic. They want something real. And even though this is a fictional account, it feels, like I said, it feels real when you read it. And it prepares you for the worst case scenario. Like, by the time I read this, and learn about all that he did when he was in his situations out there in the wild, I feel like I could survive out there too if I was... I feel motivated almost to get myself lost sometimes. <laughs> Just to see if I can test my skills. No food, no problem, no shelter, no problem. This book might just save your life. And reason number three.
integrate lesson plans and compost activities, whichever we want. This book has, there are so many ideas that you can take from Hatchet. First in math, you can calculate Brian's flight path when they went down the bush plane. Calculate geographic locations they talk about, longitude, latitude, things like that. Distance, speed, time relationships. Let's say, for example, you're standing at the edge of the lake and 50 meters away from you is a mother bull moose and she's coming at you at 10 meters per second. How long do you have the bull moose? It's all up in your face. <laughs> and meters, I'm talking metrics because they're in Canada. <laughs> health, discussing proper health and eating habits. Study the science of heart attacks. That's what uh, originally took down the, the pilot that took down the caused the crash and all that. So if you're having a bush plane, it might be important to know this. <laughs> Determine how long a person can go without food and water and study the effects of starvation and dehydration on the body. Not recommended as an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> Biology, Brian encounters all forms of wildlife in this book. Bears, moose, snapping turtles, skunks, porcupines, wolves, birds, and all sorts of different fish. Great for making projects and studying further. But we're not done. There's still more. Science introduced the concept of light refraction, spearfishing. In this book, when Brian tries his hand at spearfishing and he puts his he puts the tip of his spear kind of right in the water and he waits for a fish to sort of swim along and he jabs down but he keeps missing every time and he can't figure out why. Then he remembers the science lesson on light refraction and he knows that when he puts it out of the light bends it and creates an illusion. See, I don't even know, but I want to know because I want to go spearfishing. <laughs> Motivation, people. Motivation. Motivate, motivate, motivate. <laughs> Process of making a fire. Okay, that's important. Now, literacy, I know that you can use, you can teach literary elements through pretty much any kind of, any uh, story, but with this one, since the plot is pretty straightforward, I mean, it's a pretty straightforward story, it's pretty simple to understand. It's exciting, but like I said, it's simple, and so it's, I was, I thought it would be really easy to sort of introduce kids to these and really kind of break these down and look at them because there's not like this going on, that going on. It's just sort of just following this one character and his sort of struggle and it's kind of really easy to sort of plot all of these out. And then class projects, you can create a diorama of uh, Brian's camp, design your own survival kit. I have this link, if I can follow it. This is the class that did a bunch of uh, projects. Don't know how the school would feel about them making weapons, but uh, you know, I'd get that just kind of checked out. <coughs> to give you an idea. But there is a lot of websites that have tons of supplementary activities based off of Patch of the Year. <coughs>